Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the Irish Math Olympiad. So this is from the 2009 edition and it is question three. Before we look at the question, I wanna give a little bit of a shout out to this guy I know named Michael Toot. He's at um, Galway, which is a university in Ireland, and we shared an Uber together at a conference in Croatia. So I don't know if you're associated with that um, university or something, or if you've ever taken a course with them, maybe say hi for me. Okay, so our goal is to find all natural numbers A and B, such that A squared B squared minus four A, a plus B equals N squared for some N, which is a natural number. In other words, all positive integers A and B, such that this thing over here is a perfect square. Okay, before we look at a solution, I'm gonna give you guys some hints. Maybe you can try this on your own. So the first one is to find a bound on A and B. So this is a pretty typical trick. So what we wanna do is show that after some certain point, maybe it's like A equals seven, for instance, that there are no possibilities for a solution. And then I'm going to say my solution, at least, involved checking a bunch of cases. So um, maybe yours won't, but mine did. So I'll leave that as a hint as well. Okay, so now maybe try the problem with these hints. We'll come back with a solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look for a solution. So we're going to start off with the assumption that we order these where A is less than or equal to B. So that means any solution that we get of the form when A is less than or equal to B will have a permutation of that solution as well. But that'll simplify our calculations. The next thing that we wanna do is suppose that we have an ordered pair A and B that satisfies this setup. In other words, we have A squared B squared minus four times the quantity A plus B equals N squared, like that. Well, so now what I wanna notice is that that means that N squared is going to be less than A squared times B squared. And that's because it's equal to A squared times B squared minus some positive number. So that's actually really kind of obvious to see from this equation, but it's gonna be more helpful than it might seem like it is. So we've got N squared is less than A squared times B squared, which means that N is less than A times B. But now, since we're working over the integers, we know that that means that n is less than or equal to a times b minus one. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take this inequality involving um, n and plug it back into our original equation. So let's see what that gives us. That means n squared is less than or equal to a b minus one squared. So that's what we get from that thing that I boxed in yellow. And then what we get from this given equality, which I underlined in pink just now, is that n squared is equal to a squared b squared minus four times the quantity a plus b. So that allows us to work with only A and B and without N for a while. Now expanding this binomial, we'll get A squared B squared minus twice AB plus one. So that needs to be bigger than or equal to A squared B squared minus four A minus four B. So I distributed the minus four onto all of those parts. Now we can do some simplification. So I can cancel this A squared B squared with this A squared B squared and then rearrange this in a way so that maybe I have only positive um, A times B type terms. So let's see what that would be. That would give us something of the form 2AB is less than or equal to 4A plus 4B plus 1. So I just moved the 2AB over, the 4A and the 4B over, and then I switched things around a little bit. Okay, so now let's see what we can do from here. We can divide by two, and that gives us a, b is less than or equal to two a plus two b plus half. But again, since we're working over whole numbers or positive integers in this case, that actually tells us that a times b is less than or equal to two a plus two b. 
the half doesn't actually do anything in this case. Okay, so that's actually a good inequality to stop on for this board. I'll go ahead and bring that to the top and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so so far we've assumed that if we have a solution, in other words, we've got an ordered pair A and B, where we combine them together in that way and we get a perfect square, where A is less than or equal to B, then A times B must be less than or equal to 2A plus 2B. And you can see that this is gonna restrict us quite a bit because in the grand scheme of things, A times B is going to be bigger than 2A times 2B if you get far enough away from the origin. And that's because this thing over here is like a quadratic term, but this thing over here is like a linear term and quadratic type terms are going to grow much faster. So we just have to find the like switch over point where this thing gets bigger. And so maybe you need to play around with this a little bit, but I'll just say that um, A equals four is a good place to look at. So let's maybe notice if A is bigger than or equal to four, then A times B is going to be bigger than or equal to four times B. But notice that's equal to two B plus two B. But then we've assumed that B is bigger than or equal to A, so that is bigger than or equal to 2A plus 2B. So notice, if we've got a solution, A times B must be less than or equal to 2A plus 2B. But if A is bigger than or equal to 4, then A times B is bigger than or equal to 2A plus 2B. And I should say equality only occurs here when A equals B equals four. So if A is you know, bigger than or equal to five or B is bigger than or equal to five, then we have strict, a strict inequality here which contradicts this inequality. So that means we possibly have a solution when A equals B equals four, but we can quickly check that that inserted into this thing does not give us a perfect square. So notice we're gonna have four squared times four squared. So we're gonna have 16 squared minus four times eight. So that's gonna be minus 32. So let's see if we can simplify that a little bit using some tricks. I can factor a 16 out of that and that's gonna leave me with 16 minus two, which is 16 times 14. That's clearly not a perfect square. So this thing, in other words, doesn't work. So what we know now is that A must be less than or equal to three. So let's write that down. A must be less than or equal to three. So now I'll do like a similar bound when A is equal to three. In other words, this edge case. So if A equals three, but now in this setup, we wanna see what it takes for this inequality to be satisfied. Because recall, this inequality must be satisfied if we have a solution in the first place. So that is going to turn into three times B is less than or equal to two times B plus six. So we got that just by inserting in A equals three here. And notice we don't know what B is at the moment. But now, Notice that that tells us that B is less than or equal to six. And we get that just by moving the B over to the other side of the inequality. But now what we can do is just check all of these tuples. So we can check A equals three, B equals three. We can check A equals three, B equals four. A equals three, B equals five, and then A equals three, B equals six. And you might say, well, why do we need to start here? Well, that's because of our assumption here that um, A is less than or equal to B. And what you'll find is that none of these work. So maybe just as an example, we'll do this one right here, this A equals three, B equals four. So insert it into this object up here, that's gonna give us nine times 16 minus four times seven. 
we can maybe factor a four out of that and that's gonna give us four times. Now we'll have nine times four, which is 36 minus seven. So notice that's gonna be four times 29, but that's most definitely not a perfect square. And you can check uh, the other three cases in a similar way. So all in all, what we have this simplified down to is that A must be less than or equal to two. So let's go ahead and write that down. A must be less than or equal to two. So in other words, A must be equal to one or two. And that's because we ruled out the cases when A was bigger than or equal to four and the case when A was equal to three. So all that's left is one and two. Let's clean up the board and we'll look at those two cases. So we did a bunch of arguments with inequalities and some cases to get to this following statement. So if A is less than or equal to B, and we know that A squared B squared minus four times the quantity A plus B is N squared, in other words, it's a perfect square, then we have to have A equal to one or A equal to two. Anything else didn't work, so that's what we've done so far. So let's look at each of these cases individually. So case number one is A equals one. So what I'm gonna do is insert A equals one up here, and then somehow turn that into an equation that I can solve for B and well, we'll have to solve for N as well. So now plugging A equals one up there is going to give us B squared minus four um, times B plus one equals N squared. So let's maybe expand this a little bit. That's gonna give us B squared minus four B minus four equals N squared. This seems like it might be a little tricky to work with, but it's not too bad if you set it up like a difference of squares. So what I wanna do is essentially complete the square on this left-hand side. And so that's a standard like algebraic trick. So I can do that by making this b squared minus four b plus four. And I can change the equation to that direction by adding eight to both sides. So I'll go ahead and add eight to both sides. So that's gonna leave me with b squared minus four b plus four as desired on the left-hand side equals n squared plus eight. But now by our setup, we can factor this as b minus two quantity squared equals n squared plus eight. I can go ahead and move that n over and that's gonna leave me with b minus two squared minus n squared equals eight. Now we can factor that. So that's gonna give me uh, B minus two minus N times B minus two plus N equals eight. So I just did that as a difference of squares. So now let's think about the ways that we can factor eight and then split those factors among these two terms. So notice that this B minus two plus N is always bigger than this B minus two minus N. So when we split up the factors of eight, this gets the larger one and this gets the smaller one. So we can factor eight as eight times one or four times two. So if we split it up as eight times one, then that means this term is equal to eight and this term is equal to one. So let's maybe do that first. So we've got B minus two plus N equals eight and B minus two minus N equals one. So I should maybe call this subcase one. And now we've got a system of linear equations that we can solve for B and N. So that's actually pretty nice. Let's see what we get. So uh, how would I maybe wanna do this? Maybe let's put this underneath. So we've got B minus two minus N equals one. So maybe what we'll do is add these equations. So that's gonna give me 2b minus four equals nine, but then that's gonna give me 2b equals 13, which means b equals 13 over two, but you know, that doesn't work because we want natural numbers here. So that means we need to move on to subcase two, which is where we split up eight in its four times two factorization. So here we'll have B minus two plus N equals four and B minus two minus N equals two. So that'll be our system of equations. Again, we factored eight, larger factor, smaller factor. 
So let's go ahead and add both sides of this equation to cancel the n out. That will give us 2b minus 4 equals 6, which makes 2b equal to 10, which makes b equal to 5. So that gives us a solution. We've got a equals 1, b equals 5. So let's maybe go ahead and collect that solution right here. a equals 1, b equals 5. And then a companion to that solution is its permutation. So that would be a equals 5 and b equals 1. Because recall that we chose to not get those permutations when we chose that a was less than or equal to b, so we've got to fill those in kind of on our own. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this. We'll look at the second case when a is equal to two. So we just finished working through the case when a was equal to one. We saw that that gave us a solution, a equals one, b equals five, and then we got a symmetric solution when a was equal to five and b was equal to one. Now we're going to look at the case when a is equal to 2. So let's do that. So if a is equal to 2, if we plug that into this object up here, that is going to give us 4b squared minus 4 times b plus 2 equals n squared. We're going to play the same game that we did before with completing the square, factoring is a difference of squares, and so on and so forth. So first I'll multiply this out. That'll be 4b squared minus 4b and then minus eight equals n squared. We need to do something to this left-hand side so it'll be a perfect square binomial. We can add nine, but that means we have to add nine over to the other side of the equation. That's gonna give us four b squared minus four b plus one equals n squared plus nine. Now we can factor this left-hand side. That left-hand side factors as 2b minus one quantity squared. That's gonna be equal to n squared plus nine. Now we can go ahead and move the n squared over. That gives us 2b minus one quantity squared minus n squared equals nine. And then we can factor that as a difference of squares. So that's gonna give us 2b minus one plus n and then 2b minus one minus n equals nine. And then we wanna use the fact that nine can factor two ways. Nine can factor as one times nine or nine can factor as three times three. And then split those two factorizations of nine among these two factors that are on the left-hand side. So let's maybe do the subcase one, which is this way of splitting it up. So subcase one, so that's gonna be this way of splitting it up. So the smaller one, which is 2b minus one minus n, that's gotta be equal to one. So we've got 2b minus one minus n equals one. That makes 2b minus one plus n equal to nine. Now we can add those two equations. That's gonna give us uh, 4b minus two equals 10. That's 4b equals uh, 12, which means b equals three. So we've got another solution. A was equal to two and B was equal to three. But then we've got our symmetric copy of that solution when B is less than or equal to A. So that gives us two more. A equals two, B equals three. And then uh, A equals three, B equals two. Great. Now we've got one more thing to check and that is our last subcase when we split up nine as three times three. So let's write that as subcase two. And that's going to turn into 2b minus one minus n equals three and 2b minus one plus n equals three. Notice that only really works if n is equal to zero, but that's okay. Zero is a perfect square. Um, I guess I should say here that this is a union 
the set zero just to be uh, careful there. And you can definitely figure out a setup where a squared times b squared is equal to four times a plus b, which would be when that's equal to zero squared. Okay, so next we're gonna add these two equations. That's gonna give us four b minus two equals six, which means four b equals eight, which means b equals two. And so that finally gives us our last solution, which is A equals two, B equals two. And we don't have to worry about its symmetric copy because they're equal in this case. And that's a good place to stop.